In 1865, August Kokule spent his days trying to figure out the configuration of the benzene molecule. After days and days of struggling, he woke up one day with the answer. In his dream, he saw the Ouroboros, a snake coiled up with its tail in its mouth. And the answer immediately came to him. The molecule is shaped like a ring. This problem that Kokule had is interesting because it was his unconscious mind that solved the problem. Therefore, his unconscious mind understood language. And if his unconscious mind understood language, then why didn't it simply just answer his question? This story is mentioned at the beginning of the essay called The Kukule Problem by Cormac McCarthy. It is a non-fiction essay where McCarthy explores the unconscious mind and the origins of language. I found this essay incredibly interesting to read. So today I'm basically just going to be summarizing parts of it that I found interesting. So let's get into it. Before we get into the interesting stuff, I want to give a clear definition of the unconscious so that we all understand what it means. According to Google, the unconscious is the part of the mind which is inaccessible to the conscious mind but which affects our behavior and emotions. McCarthy says that all animals have an unconscious. However, we tend to accredit the unconscious with things that it does not actually do. For example, a lot of the times we credit the unconscious with controlling our breathing. However, that's not actually the case. Our breathing is actually controlled by our brainstem or a part of our brainstem. He backs his claim up by talking about the first dolphin that was anesthetized. What happened was after the dolphin was put under anesthesia, it actually ended up dying. This is because dolphins alternate between having half their brain awake and half their brain asleep so that they can regulate their breathing. And since the anesthesia put both sides of the brain to sleep, that just led to the dolphin not being able to control its breathing. McCarthy also says that it is indisputable that our unconscious mind does solve problems such as mathematics. However, we don't actually understand how it does this. Similar to how we speak to each other in conversation, we don't spend time organizing or thinking exactly what we're going to say. The words kind of just flow out without us consciously thinking about them. So there are a large amount of animals that have what we would consider proto-language. For example, chipmunks actually have different alarm calls for aerial predators and ground predators. And this right here is the essential idea of language, that one thing can be another thing. This was probably the most fascinating part of the essay, for me at least, because McCarthy says that this idea it is the root of all of our doings. Honestly, you could probably name like hundreds of examples of this. Some examples of this would be how we use dollar bills to represent money, and using symbols to represent things that we can't visually see, like atoms and molecules. Nearly everything in our world revolves around this central idea. According to McCarthy, language spread throughout our species almost instantaneously. One of the problems that it faced though, was that there were too many things to name than there were sounds to use. People in Africa used clicks to combat this problem, which allowed them to have a greater variety of sounds. Our bodies also evolved to fix this problem. In a short amount of time, our bodies evolved and our throats actually turned over so that it could complement speaking. This had a major drawback though, because it caused us to be vulnerable to choking on food, which as we all know is a common cause of death. The thing is though, is that language did not actually meet a need that we had. McCarthy repeats multiple times in this essay that there are thousands of mammals that do completely fine without language. However, as we know, it is extremely useful. Cormac McCarthy actually describes language as a parasitic invasion due to how it invaded parts of our brain. Almost all of us have had repetitive dreams, and apparently these are actually caused by the unconscious mind trying to teach us something. And of course, these dreams are always visual. This is because it is infinitely easier for us to recall visuals than it is for us to recall words. In the same way, we can discuss books that we've read and the stuff that's happened in them, even if we do not remember like exa exactly what was said on the page. When we have repetitive dreams, it's as if the unconscious mind has multiple voices that are trying to get a point across to us. I've definitely, definitely experienced this before myself, where I'll have repetitive dreams that directly relate to things that I'm going through in my real life. However, I won't actually take the time out of my day to like think about it and reflect on it. And these repetitive dreams will just continue to happen again and again and again, as if my unconscious is fighting to get me to understand something. At the beginning of McCarthy's essay and at the beginning of this video, the question of why doesn't the unconscious just straight up tell us what it's trying to tell us is brought up. Like why is it so difficult for the unconscious to just be straight up with us, instead of trying to tell us these things in like kind of unclear ways in our dreams, where we're obviously going to have a tough time trying to understand what the mind is telling us. At the end of the essay, McCarthy answers this question. He basically says that the reason is that the unconscious is actually not used to giving verbal instruction. This is because our unconscious has been navigating us through life for millions and millions of years without using language. And these habits just aren't going to break overnight. It's like we've invented language. However, our unconscious mind hasn't evolved to the point where it can use language to communicate with us. This has made me wonder if 
maybe in the future, our unconscious mind will continue to evolve. And these like unclear and unconcise ways of communicating with us will change into something that's more precise and actually uses language. The way that our unconscious works is still largely unknown. Near the end of the essay, McCarthy presents a myriad of questions about the unconscious, such as whether it knows it's going to die and what it even knows about itself. This made me realize how deep and vast the knowledge of our unconscious can really be. If you found any of this interesting, I strongly suggest that you go read the essay for yourself. It'll be linked in the description. And if you enjoy this video in any way, make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment because I'm actually very interested to see what you guys think about this. So if you're interested in Cormac McCarthy, you're probably interested in literature. So up on the screen, you'll see a video where I talk about why you should read literature in 2022. So go watch that video. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.